So, Den Heng and Bibiter Lunai is around the corner, and I thought it'd be a good time to start talking about the character. There's a couple of things we should get out the way. First of all, we know he's a character that works kind of like QQ, in the sense where he uses his skill points to generate his uh, enhanced attack, and once he has his enhanced attack to whatever level you want the enhanced attack to be, then you will fire off the enhanced attack to deal massive damage. So he's a character right off the bat we know is going to be a very selfish and very strong hard-hitting damage dealer. So that alone lets us know that he's going to be a character you build your team around. So just like QQ, you need a team to where you don't want to burn as many skill points as you can with the other allies in the team composition. And that is if you're using QQ at an E0 level. If you have more idols for the character, then she can generate skill points to where she's not burning up as well. Most of the time, not burning up as many skill points as she once was before, but generally you want to build a team around her. So a character like Silver Wolf works really well with QQ, a character that burns so many skill points. This character is able to generate a skill point while being effective as an offensive debuffer for the character. Now pretend this is Fu Shuan, a character that we'll be releasing later who is also Quantum Element, who will be a very nice character as of the preservation path for a defensive option for QQ. And I think that character like Jephard will also be skill point positive, meaning she's a very nice character to use with QQ, for sure. So QQ is the character that if you have Eidolons for, you can actually use Seal. But if you don't have Eidolons for the character, then I do not recommend using Seal. Because these two characters do not mix. I would say this character burns more skill points than Seal, and Seal burns less skill points than this character. So ideally, you could have Seal, and you can have another damage due in the team composition. But if you don't have Eidolons for this character, you can't use her. So Den Heng and BB2 Lunai will work just like QQ at an easier version of QQ. You want a team built around the character. So we have the Den Heng self-insert, pretend this is the imaginary version of him, right? His five-star dragon kin version. The first character that comes to mind is Yu Kong because this character hasn't been utilized as well as other characters of the Harmony Path has been utilized, but she also does provide crit rate and crit damage buff, which we'll get into later when we actually get into yeah, this is the intro of the video, believe it or not. So that's the first character that comes to mind as an offensive buffer for Den Heng and Bieber 2 Lunai. Now we need another character, just like Yukong, that won't burn up as many skill points as, well, when I say, remember, early in the video I said heavy investment. So ideally, you want Yukong to have Eidolon copies. So if you have Eidolon copies for Yukong, then she won't be as much of a skill point burden as she is at her E0 version. But ideally, you want another character as well that can enhance the performance of Den Hang and Bibi Tulanai while also being able to generate skill points that he can use for himself. As crazy as it sounds, I recommend Bronya, but only for one reason alone. If you have E0 Bronya, she becomes skill point neutral to skill point positive, depending on how fast you have her. And well, if you get the you god roll on the RNG proc of the item on one, of course. Me, that never happens, so my Bronya ends up being skill point neutral to skill point a detriment. And if you have this light cone for Bronya, then you're able to generate another skill point to the team, which in turn will make her a much better option than she once was before at an E0 with a no copy of her light cone character for Den Hang of 2 Lunai. So if you do have that for Bronya, those two requirements, then I think she'll be a very nice option to use alongside Den Hang. But if you don't have those options, then I honestly don't recommend using her alongside Yukong to support Den Hang and Bibi 2 Lunai because these two characters alone are a detriment to your skill point usage, while a character like Den Hang is also the hardest detriment character in the game to the skill point usage system. As for the defensive option, well, you have this guy. This guy is what you need in that team comp because he is a very skill point positive. He provides tons of he overhealing for the team, so that's all you really need from a defensive option. He also is able to remove buffs from the enemy, which makes him a very valuable option to use alongside Den Heng. Because as you all know, there might be enemies in the game that A, have a revive or may have a way of blocking damage from one hit. So he takes care of that completely. And he's also a character that can heal whenever you need it on an emergency heal, which is very valuable for a character like Den Heng. Because if you use him alongside that character, you won't ever have to worry about Den Heng getting hit hard. And the truth is, if you played to certain parts of Memories of Chaos, then there is an enemy to where whenever you use your elemental skill, which a character like Dan Hank is going to be using his elemental skill like three times, you will be hit by that giant monkey looking 
abyssal creature. I don't remember his name, but yeah, he jumps on you and smacks you. It's like Donkey Kong a little bit. You may have a character like Jephard who may work because he is also skill point positive. You have a character like Bailu who can also work because she is also skill point positive. Natasha can work, but this character might be a hindrance at times because she can take a skill point one or two depending on how much healing you really need on your characters. So when you look at a team like that for MBB2 Lunai, it seems like it could work. But the truth is, it's a lot of investment. I would say a lot of either luck investment or a lot of monetary investment, which I don't recommend for many players, right? Because I always promote the free-to-play experience. But if you do happen to enjoy Denheng and you want the best for the character, I personally see that as a team I would use. But it does come at a cost, like I said. Now, let's get into the video. So Path of Destruction is known for characters that are able to deal large amounts of damage, are able to have very good survivability in the sense of maybe damage reduction, maybe being able to apply shields, or maybe being able to heal themselves completely. So they're suitable for various combat scenarios, so meaning they're very flexible characters because they have lots of ways of doing damage and providing themselves with mitigation that other paths of damage, I would say classes, are not able to do themselves. So when we look at the Path of Destruction, we see characters like Arlen, Hook, Clara, and Blade. But Den Heng of Baby2 Lunai is going to be the first option of, I would say, the rare elements. Meaning he's going to be the first option we have, which is an imaginary character. But unlike these characters, Den Heng and Baby2 Lunai is a character that you build your team around. So he's not a character that you can slot everywhere like Clara. And he's definitely not a character that is as flexible as Blade. He's going to be the first destruction character that you have to build your team around. I know Arlen does work like that a little bit, but the truth is this character just needs a shield. That's all he really needs is a shield. So with him being imaginary, that means he could work pretty well for a character like Yukong, who buffs imaginary characters while providing tons of buff for the characters of the destruction path. She's a character that I think works really well for characters in that path because she provides crit rate and crit damage which is very rare for characters of that path because they don't normally get it from their traces. So Blade is the first character that has broken that trend of the destruction path being a path of characters that don't get crit rate and crit damage from their traces, unlike other characters in other paths like Seal, for example. Blade has crit rate traces, which allows the character to be built much more easily because as you all know, crit rate and crit damage are the rarest damaging stats you can get in the game. However, it's unclear whether or not Dunhang will also get that many crit rate traces for the character. So we have to understand that a character like Yukong will be very nice for the character anyways. Because of all the buffs she provides being crit rate and crit damage, she also gives imaginary damage bonus to the character. Which is everything you want from a offensive buffer support for your very selfish and very hungry DPS character. The crit rate and crit damage that Yukong provides is very nice for a character like Dan Hang Baby 2 Lunai. This allows the character to be much more consistent with his crits, meaning he takes more advantage of the crit damage, which will further in increase his crits, right? Yukong also provides an attack buff to the allies by the massive amount. So depending on the level you have on your skill for Yukong, means the amount of attack you'll be given to the allies is increased. Yukon can actually resist one debuff one time, which has a two turn cooldown. But this is very good because if you take into consideration in the hyper carry team composition, a character like Bronya only wants to use her elemental skill on Den Heng whenever he gets CC'd. And lastly, one thing worth mentioning is that she is a character that provides buffs to the whole team. So a character like Bronya can benefit from the buffs Yukon provides. I'll explain that in just a second. Luocha can also benefit from the buffs that Yukong provides because unlike other characters in the Path of Abundance, Luocha does decent amount of damage depending on the investment you have built into the character for those damage capabilities, of course. Bronya could take advantage of the buffs Yukong provides because the crit damage that Yukong gives, Bronya can give to herself, which will in turn increase the crit damage that she gives to Dead Hanging Baby 2 Lunai. On top of the elemental damage bonuses that Bronya provides to Den Heng and Lunai, that means that Den Heng is going to be dealing massive amounts of damage output. And as I said before, she is the character that has a cleanse on her elemental skill. 
meaning she can use that whenever she is buffing Den Heng anyways. And since he's the character that's going to be dealing, well, let's be honest, most if not all the damage in the team comp, you only want to use your elemental skill or cleanse that ally anyways. So if you take into consideration that the crit damage Yukon provides, which is more crit damage going towards Bronya, which in turn means more crit damage to Den Heng, on top of the attack she gives to all allies, this attack increase on top of the attack increase that Yukon provides is going to be beneficial to not only Den Heng, to Yukon as well, and also Luocha, which we'll get into later in the video. Cleansing the ally you only need to cleanse is very valuable on an elemental skill that you're going to be using on that ally anyways, and then the damage increase is very good. You take into consideration this goes really high depending on the level and of course what weapon you're using on Bronya matters a lot because that damage increase you give to the ally will be further increased even more. And then of course the damage increase that all allies deal in the field is very valuable especially in a team comp where everyone in the team can deal a decent amount of damage. So Bronya is a very crucial part in this team composition because of all the buffs she provides is very very valuable for a character like Denhang BB2 and I. But the buffs she also gives can be very beneficial to all the other characters in the team comp like Yukong and Luocha who can deal a decent amount of damage, especially Yukong. And lastly, this guy just continues to become more and more valuable. He is a character that we all skipped and we all wish we didn't skip because he's just so freaking good. He's always at the top of every tier list and he's always the character that you're like, man, if only I had Luocha right now, I wouldn't be feeling this way. And I feel this way right now. This character is so freaking good. He's going to be even more valuable when Den Hang Baby 2 Lunai comes out because of all of the healing he provides to the team while also being a very skill point positive character. He's also a character that can be built with damage. And if you're getting attack, crit rate, and crit damage in the team comps you'll have with Den Hang Baby 2 Lunai, he's a character that can be putting out a reasonable amount of damage. A healer that's built primarily on attack means that this character can have high amounts of attack, benefit from the attack increases he gets from Bronya and Yukong, while also being able to provide tons of more healing with all that attack increases he gets. He has a field that heals all the allies of course, which means he is a character that provides tons of passive healing. And being a buff remover means he's a character that you can find yourself using in situations where you don't use any other abundance characters. So there's enemies that have ways of buffing themselves that have buffs that are very annoying to deal with. So a character that is able to remove the buffs from the enemy while still being a skill point positive character at that, unlike Pela, who uses her elemental skill to remove the buff, makes this character all the more valuable. So I can go on and on and on about Luocha, and you can hear the regret in my voice for not pulling for this character, but he's going to be very nice to use alongside Deadhang and BB2 Lunai. There is one light cone I'm pretty fond of in the destruction path for Deadhang and BB2 Lunai, and that is the Moles Welcome You. There isn't very many honestly good destruction light cones that are very universal or very versatile for all of the characters in that path, but this light cone sticks out in particular. I almost coughed there. I'm very sorry because all you have to do is use your basic attack elemental skill and your ultimate on the enemy, and you're able to get up to 72% attack increase, of course, depending on the refinement levels of your light cone. Okay, I need to cough really bad. The next one is the Destruction Light Cone you get in Herda's Bond Shop, which is actually pretty good on Den Hang anyways. The only reason why I didn't include this over the Moles Welcome You Light Cone is because if you have Clara, you may be already using this on your Clara. But if you don't have the character, then this is honestly the best free-to-play option you can use on the character. Because of all the attack increases you get, while also having your damage increase, which counts as elemental damage bonus, by the way, whenever you inflict weakness break on the enemies. And we know that his skill or his enhanced attack hits multiple enemies just like other characters with their enhanced attacks right adjacent enemies you're going to be proccing that weakness to break effect a lot of the time so you're going to have a hundred percent uptime on this most of the time as far as it goes with other light cone choices just use honestly whatever you have on your account i think that's the best way to play it or if you want to use his five star best in slot light cone you can't go wrong with that either because of course that will be his best in slot but Denhang BB29 is a character that can be pretty good. You just have to build your team around him. So a lot like Seal in that case. You want to have all of your offensive buffers, all of your offensive debuffers, and you also want to have your defensive options that are skill point positive and don't take any skill points from your very skill point aggressive and very hungry DPS character, in this case Denhang. 
And if you have all of those boxes checked, then you'll have a character that works really well in the hyper carry setting. If you have Eidolon 1 for Bronya and her 5 star Lycone, then she can be a very nice option to use alongside Den Heng. The only problem I see with this character is there, there might be some situations where you find yourself burning way too many skill points and you have to use less skill points than Den Heng, which means your Den Heng will be doing less damage if you didn't have Bronya in the team comp. But if you roll very well on the RNG of the Eidolon 1, and maybe your Bronya has tons of speed to where you can get the passive unlocked for the Eidolon 1 more consistently, then you'll have a very nice character to use alongside your Den Hang. Probably the best harmony character you can use with the character. That's going to be the video here. Thank you for watching. Honestly, there was a lot to talk about, way more than I thought there was going to be to talk about. I'm honestly still getting over my sickness. I probably shouldn't be making videos, but I just enjoy. I can't help myself, okay? Thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your weekend. Peace.